Good afternoon. How are you today? Well, the Thomas Jefferson corner of our presentation, <laughs> I can tell you that it's uh, 59 degrees, maybe 60 right now, and it should go down to the 40s later. And around 10 o'clock, it may rain. And we have some wind, but so far it's not affecting our audibility when I speak to you. Yesterday, uh, I think that the vectors were not heading in the best direction in the Middle East. Uh, Netanyahu seemed to nail down a position which was basically to occupy Gaza and to wipe out uh, Hamas and to do it with great dispatch. And probably like myself, you were surprised that nothing had happened last evening to affect that objective that was plainly what Netanyahu wanted. So what happened on the way to, the, uh, to this disaster that could have occurred? Biden, uh, I think, first pressed quietly behind the scenes and then more publicly with the view that we were not going to occupy Gaza and we were going to show uh, civilization toward the hostages, wanted them released, and wanted them to receive supplies. And Jake Sullivan was in charge of that, and he was surprised to find that when he got to Egypt, the supplies were there, but they hadn't been moved into the south of Gaza and were not being distributed to anyone. Now, the uh, trucks that were going to deliver it were going to be permitted, but here's the problem with that. Uh, Israelis were not giving any assurances that what they would do would be to leave the trucks alone. In other words, they were free to bomb them. So there, there's some rustling around these possible solutions because we speak with one hand and we take away with the other hand. So that's that's been the problem there now. Now I think that the delay through uh, this day of war is helpful because it's putting people in a different position. And that different position is to back off war crimes at least. Now, are we free of war? No, we're not. And what's Biden's position about what we do with Hamas? His position is that Hamas does not represent uh, Palestinians. And he still sees a two-state solution as the only way out of the difficulty that is this Mideast collision of interests and history and prejudice and hurt and hate. And they're trying to deal with this by apportioning, if you will, justice to those who deserve it as opposed to those who do not. So we're in this, uh, we're in this trying situation, but it seems like we have snatched minor, if not major, victory from the jaws of defeat by uh, Biden taking a leadership role. Now, it's also possible, probably likely, that by... Biden taking these positions, he's encouraged those who might intervene, you know, say Saudi Arabia or uh, Iran or anyone else, uh, the Hezbollah in Lebanon. He's probably persuaded them that we have the strongest argument to make to get what we believe is the right solution to the standoff that we have in the Middle East. So I, I think that we... We have been encouraged to settle this. Now, here's, here's the other thing that I think is interesting. The, the thing that's interesting is late today, the, uh, well, the, the Hamas announced that what they would do would be they would release the hostages. So they have decided to show good faith after a lot of bad faith. But how do we find an exit door out of this mess? And this, this appears to be the way. Now, they, Hamas, want to do this at a time that makes the most sense on the ground. In other words, they're not going to play the fool. And of course, our suspicion would be, are they not only not going to play the fool, are they going to play us for a fool and say this to buy themselves time but not do anything as they suggest to release the hostages? So I'm sure what we're going to see going forward is intermediaries trying to 
ink this document and it's going to be a hard swallow for Hamas to buy the notion that they they have no dog in this fight in the sense that they don't get to represent anyone because they don't represent the Palestinians. And whatever right they had to represent uh, any aspect of the population in Gaza really has been lost by the extreme war crimes that they committed. Now, I think we saved uh, Netanyahu, at least at this point, the way it appears, we saved him from committing these crimes. So, talk about a very tentative, fragile progress, but nonetheless progress. I don't think uh, any one of us thought yesterday that we would hear these kinds of statements. Now, the, the test will be uh, in the working out of it. Will it happen? Will they do it? Will they bring it forward? At the same time, thinking domestically a little bit, uh, Biden has pulled, pulled in $71 million for his campaign in the last quarter, more than any of the others. And so uh, it's beginning to look a lot like Biden as leader serves himself as candidate very well because the public gets to see him operating in real time to do something that's good for the region. It kind of strikes me, remember when he was giving the State of the Union and he uh, pivoted, if you will. He extemporaneously suggested, well, if you guys, you Republicans, are fine with uh, Social Security and Medicare, just stand up and say you support it. And they did. And he said, well, I'll remind you of that during the election. That was a leadership moment. Didn't suggest aging got in the way of his ability to lead. And what we've seen now in the last several days is a man of his age traveling halfway around the world, meeting with people, negotiating, and leading a settlement that has great possibility and promises to make a difference going forward. Now, you have to work into this something that others who are competing against him for the nomination to run for president in the other party uh, he has extraordinary background in foreign affairs and was the chair of various committees that put him in a position to have that experience and to know what to do and to know these people. When he says he knows the Secretary of, of State for one nation or other or the leader or the prime minister, he does know them because he's been around, he's done these things. And the wisdom body that comes with that kind of experience is nothing to... Uh, blink at. It's important that you have this kind of experience because the wisdom of experience as well as the content of past policies puts you in a position to say, yeah, but remember when you did this or you did that or the other thing and we know these people and we can trust these people. And I think that it's fair to say without any exaggeration that the people of Israel and I would think the, the rest of the population as well who are not comfortable with Hamas uh, would favor uh, at least an exploration of how you could settle this terrible, terrible event. Well, I mentioned how we have uh, um, Biden is making a difference in his own election. Well, Pence is uh, uh, Pence is running short on money. I think it's like something like six hundred thousand dollars he owes, and he doesn't know how he's going to pay for it. But uh, to sum it all up, what we have is an unconditional offer to uh, release the hostages and at an appropriate time, and obviously that has to be soon enough so that it's credible. And we have uh, the delivery of these life-saving supplies and hopefully an easing of the war, if you will, in a way that satisfies not just the cosmetics, but in real terms, but is not composed of uh, now we'll do war crimes to get even with you. This tit for tat thing can't exist if we're going to go forward toward any kind of living arrangement as opposed to killing and death arrangements. The, uh, the passage 
of the Middle East from where it was uh, only days ago to where it is now is nothing short of a, of a miracle. If, if it goes as stated. So we'll have to watch that. But today I think that we should feel comfortable that uh, we've kept not just hope alive, but the possibility of life to prosper going forward. There's going to be a lot of pain and suffering to get over what's been done already. And hopefully we can turn from those ashes into something that's vibrant and has the possibility of once and for all shifting that area of the world into a place where we can proceed constructively, creatively. Now, that's going to happen in small steps. But remember the difference between yesterday and today. If we can continue building on that, then we've really done something. So that's, uh, that's what I've been thinking today. Uh, I think it, these are encouraging. And I've listened, perhaps like some of you, when I had a chance today in between <laughs> writing uh, paper in my cases. And uh, I've been encouraged. I want to believe it. I'm not a fool. I'm not a person who is easily persuaded, nor do I think any of you are. And what we're really asking here is for everybody who's a player to do what they said they'd do. And if that happens, then we may be in a very different place than we were when we had this horrendous death-dealing surprise that we talk about so much and wave the bloody shirt, the loss of children, the kinds of things that happen in a war. Well, we've seen it. Let's not choose that war. Let's not choose to do more of the same. For all those people who die in an extension of this, they die in vain because they don't contribute in any way, shape, or form to a peace, even a, even a subtle and delicate peace. Yes, this has been going on since 1947. Isn't it about time that we finished it off? So, that's what I got to say. And here I am on relatively flat ground. And it'll be another week before I can go up and down hills. All the best. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.